So we're going to use this rocket equation to get us into space. Now, we kind of really need to do a few things here. We need to look at where we're going, what we want to carry, and making essentially that dry mass, the rest of the rocket, kind of as efficient as light as possible, yeah. right? So let's actually do a calculation yeah. for a real rocket. So let's imagine you want to launch a communication satellite or an Earth observing satellite to low orbit. Right. Bramsat is going to spy on, I don't know, whoever you want to spy on. And <laughs> anyway. I got, I'm not that interesting. I'll spy on Paul. Uh, okay, I'll monitor all the students watching the video. Okay, so we're going to spy on the students using a low Earth orbit satellite. So first of all, we look at this delta V chart. Yep. And we realize that to get from the Earth's surface to low Earth orbit, we're going to need about 9,250 meters per second, so 9.2 kilometers per, per second. second. So that's the delta V. That's the delta V. And that's the lowest you're ever going to get for yep. a rocket from the Earth's surface. Yep. Okay, so we know that. And now we know which rocket we're going to use. So let's okay. use the cheapest rocket that currently will get us into space, which is SpaceX's Falcon 9, yep. which if you take a reusable one is about 60 million US dollars a pop. Um, better launch a lot more than what you need, yeah, so yeah. you can launch a whole bunch of spy satellites right. at the same time. So this is what it looks like, and uh, that's your payload with your yeah. spy satellite up at the top, and pretty much everything else is fuel tanks and rockets. So the, we have the whole thing is the wet mass, Yep. And then the dry mass is really just a little bit there and a little bit on the outside. Yeah, it's got to be the weight of the fuel tanks, the weight of the rockets, which you try and make as light as possible, yep. and the light of the brand spy satellite you're trying to launch. So this is fired by the Falcon rocket. Yep. And this is what it looks like. And this uh, burns uh, rocket fuel, RP-1, which is a petro petro highly refined petroleum with liquid oxygen. And it gets an exhaust velocity of about 3,000 meters per second. So. Three, three kilometers per second. Now we so need that flame at the bottom there is going down at three kilometers a second, which is pretty bloody fast, right? Now that's our VE, and our delta V we needed was about nine, nine. kilometers per second. So if we go to the equation, the ratio of the masses equal to the exponent of the ratio of the velocities. Yep. So the ratio of velocities is the delta V we need, 20 to 9256, oh, divided right. by what SpaceX will produce, which is about 3,000. Yep. So it's actually a bit less than 3,000 at sea level and a bit more at high altitude, but roughly that. We'll just assume 3,000. Okay. Yeah. So that divided by that, put in your calculator, is three and a bit. So our wet to dry mass ratio is E to the 3.07, which yep. is 21.7. Yeah. So 3.07 doesn't sound too bad, but then but we got to two, the exponential. exponential. Of it. And exponential makes things big, which is kind of why you say it's exactly. exponentially bad. And so that means it's actually the exponent of that, which you can do with a calculator, is 21.7. So, so what you're saying is we essentially need a lot more fuel. We need 20, 20 tons times of fuel roughly. for every one ton of combined rocket and payload. Seems like a lot. Yes, I mean, just imagine what your car would be like. I mean, a car weighs about <laughs> one and a half tons. And if it was 20 tons of fuel on board. You need these several tankers driving along behind you to keep your car going. So uh, that's, uh, you can do this off the graph. If yep. you don't, don't want to play with exponentials on your calculator. So again, we see that the ratio of the velocities is 9256 over 3000, it's about three. So we can go to the graph. Yep. We go along the bottom, we see the velocity ratio is about three. We go up here to and the blue line, and then read across, and we see we need a mass ratio about, about 20, 20. Yep. which is what we just said in the previous thing with the calculator. Yep. So, is that actually accurate? Well, if you look up the Falcon 9, it is indeed 95% fuel. Hmm. 20 parts fuel for every part of anything else. The launch mass is 549 tonnes, yep. and the payload to low Earth orbit is about 22 tonnes, which is actually 4.1%. So, and this, so this is the, my spy satellite I'm taking. And presumably the other 1% or so is actually the rocket engines and the fuel tanks, which, which is actually, pretty amazing to be able to store 500 tonnes of fuel with only <laughs> two or three tonnes tons, worth of metal yeah, and yeah, engines. That's right. So you want the engines to be incredibly lightweight. And efficient to get that generated at that And it's got a really velocity. big fuel tank that's got to be able to withstand the shock of being fired into space, but still store all that while weighing almost nothing. So it's kind of amazing it works at all to some degree. And this is why early on um, people often thought space travel was impossible. Mm. The amount of energy you can get out of rocket fuel is not really enough to do this. That's you need right. to burn an awful lot of fuel to take a very small amount into space. And that's just going to low Earth orbit. If you want to send your Bradsat to Mars, your delta V is going to be three or four times as much. So the mass ratio is going to be exponentially three or four times as much, so maybe a hundred times as much. So it's, it's, instead of being 5% everything else, you might be 0.1% everything else. And this is essentially why all those moon rockets end up being very large. Yes, so you add up all these things to go to Mars or Moon or anything else, you're in real trouble, and so you're going to need an enormous amount of fuel for a really tiny amount of